How is everyone doing? Welcome back to another episode of The Banker Next Door. I am your host, Dr. Joe Burquist. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be looking at what does higher for longer in terms of interest rates mean for banks' margins right now? What's going on with deposit costs? Uh, how is this affecting kind of banks' earnings right now? We have what's called margin compression. And we're going to look at a couple other things in terms of, of what if the Fed pivots with interest rates, what's that going to mean for for deposit costs? Uh, we have CDs that are that are coming up for maturity for the first time, and and now not like the first time, but a, a good chunk are coming up on maturity. And what does that mean for banks? How's that going to play out? So I want to take a look at an article here. Uh, this is from S and P Global Market Intelligence, and this is called "Higher for Longer Rates." keep bank margins, commercial real estate in the spotlight. So U.S. banks' net interest margins should trough soon, but higher for longer interest rates means significant expansion lies further out on the horizon. Bank credit quality will also deteriorate further, just not as much as some investors as some investors fear. Um, and I think that's a good synopsis for where things are at right now. So the, the take here is that while the pressure of net interest margin could subside soon, higher deposit costs will prove stubborn for the vast majority of banks during the remainder of 2024, unless there are notable declines in interest rates. Amid a higher for longer rate environment, funds will continue to move into more expensive deposits and institutions will see customer balances reprice higher as certificates of deposit mature. That dynamic will limit the turnaround in net interest margin. The street, however, is climbing a wall of worry over the potential for increased credit costs, particularly over banks' exposure to commercial real estate. The industry will see credit losses rise notably over the next few quarters, but the increase should serve as a headwind to earnings rather than a threat to bank balance sheet. So breaking down a couple of things going on here. So this chart that we're looking at here is called Bank Industry Aggregate Profitability Metrics. Now we have the first thing is year to date 2024 actual, and then the rest of this going out is projections. So we're looking at bank, bank efficiency ratios. Right now, the industry is at like a 58.45, which is actually pretty good. Um, I would say industry average is probably more around like 65. Um, so that's a pretty, so, you know, efficiency ratio of, of 58 and, and a half basically is pretty good. And the projections basically showing that creep up to 60%. And then, and then by 2026, back down to 58, 27, back down to 57 or 56 rather. Uh, net interest margin, the big one right now is, is hanging out at 3.11%. Uh, for the rest of 24, for the press of the projection is basically again just staying at that 3.11 percent 25 going up just a hair to 3.13 26 getting a little bit better at 3.29 and then 27 getting up to 3.36 so so looking better as it's going on uh but then they have return on assets and return on equity return on assets they have at like a 1.08 so and and that's pretty good i mean that's industry average i mean i think a, like a good roa is just one if you're at one percent that's a good roa and anything above one is is you're getting really good but they're projecting us that to fall below one uh for the rest of the year at like 0 0.92 which is again it's getting a little little not terrible but a little low uh, and they're having it bounce back to 0 0.99 and 25, 1.20, 26, uh, 1.32 and 27, uh, 1.34 and 28. So definitely, definitely a good bounce back in the in the coming years, but not so hot in uh, in basically the rest of 24 through 25. And then the same thing with return on on equity. Here again, if you've got a 10, if you're at like 10 percent, that's kind of pretty good. For the industry, anything above 10% is really looked at as, okay, you're, you're performing really well. Right now, we're at 11.14, which is pretty good, but we're dropping down or it's projected to drop down to a 9.39 by the end of the year. But then it bounces back to 10% in 25, 12.13, 26, 13.15, and 27. So definitely, you know, again, going well, but in the short term, not looking so hot. So, and it has year over year growth. Uh, actual is negative 5.5%. By the end of the year, they're saying that will be negative 6.4, but then they're projecting that it'll bounce back to an 11% growth rate in 25, jump to 26.3 in 26, and then drop back down to 14% in 27. So, um, so again, right now, the projected kind of roller coaster is it's going to get a little worse through the rest of this year, 
but then we should have a nice bounce back in 25, 26, and 27. So now let's get into the deposit mix here a little bit. So deposit mix shift continues to serve as a overhang for many banks. The Federal Reserve's tightening campaign and regulate, regulators focus on bank liquidity have kept deposits firmly in focus for banks, even as liquidity levels have stabilized or have they. Um, heading into second quarter earnings season, deposits had grown for two consecutive quarters, reversing six straight quarterly declines. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that trend ended uh, this week. Uh, we got some updated news uh, that basically said that, yeah, de deposits had reversed again and we're now starting to flow back out. Not, not a lot, just a little bit, but the, the trend had reversed itself again. Um, but this, you know, and it says here that that growth has come at a cost as institutions have defended their deposit bases with a significantly higher rates and narrowed the gap with higher yielding alternatives in the treasury and money markets. Uh, the spread is evident when looking at the difference uh, between the average Fed funds rate and the industry's cost of deposits, which peaked in the second quarter of 2023. So let's go down here to a very interesting chart. And here you can see, so this chart is deposits grow again as spread between the Fed funds rate and the cost of deposits narrow. So in the orange on the gap here, we're looking at Fed funds. Basically, this is the cost of deposits. And you can see here from this chart starts at 2016, it goes up to 2024, 2025, 2026, which are projections. But you can see here that 2016 to 2019 jumped up a little bit, but then cratered right back down, obviously during the pandemic. And then, but then just took off like a rocket. And we have seen this massive increase in deposits, a, a, a an increase that has not been seen in banking in 15 years. Um, you know, going back to before the Great Recession in 07, 08, 09. And we're at a level there. I mean, you can see the cost of funds over 3% there um, on average. You know, it's 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 you know gone up dramatically, and then we have industry aggregate costs of deposits is the blue line here. You can see that again um, escalating up, and then we have the Fed funds rate obviously going up with the increase in interest rates. Now, here's the interesting thing: this chart on the far right here, toward the end, you see these the red line for Fed funds coming down, signaling the Federal Reserve is going to reduce interest rates, and thus. The blue line for aggregate cost of deposits is also going to go down with it. However, when you come down at the bottom of the chart here, you see that 2024, this is where the projections start. These are projected numbers. It's projected to go down. We don't know yet that that is actually the case. If, if, the, if the rates, if the Federal Reserve does, decides not to decrease the rates or, or decreases very little, that, you know, we might not see the relief here that they think is they're going to get in this chart. So just something interesting to point out. So um, so now let's go down here. You know, deposit competition should persist as interest rates re remain or, you know, are not expected to decline much while regulators continue to pressure banks to maintain strong levels of liquidity. Those dynamics will prompt banks to place a higher value on deposits and other forms of funding. Uh, the industry has incurred pain from that shift since the Fed began raising rates with funds moving out of non-interest bearing deposits into higher cost products for institutions such as broker deposits and CDs. Um, and it says, you know, interest bearing deposits have risen 6.6% since year end 2021, while non-interest bearing deposits have plunged 28.6%. The decline pushed the industry's non-interest bearing concentration down to 21.4% of total deposits at the end of the first quarter of 2024 from 25.9% at year end 2022 and 28.9% at year end 2021. We expect non-interest bearing deposits to decline further in 24, dipping to 21% of deposits. Uh, CDs have become much larger portions of bank funding, fund banks funding bases. Uh, those products should continue to grow, leading to higher deposit costs. Uh, funding costs will also face upward pressure as CDs originated in 2023 mature and reprice at higher rates. Um, at the end of the first quarter of 2024, CDs maturing in the next three months equated to 5% of the industry's deposits, while CDs maturing in the next 12 months equate to 13.2% of the industry's deposits. So, and again, and now we're looking at another chart here, and this is more CDs maturing soon across the banking industry. So here, 
in this chart, we see CDs repricing in three months, which is the blue line here. And then we see here CDs repricing in 12 months, which is here. Uh, 21 here, again, this is actual, actual. And then we get over here, 23, 24, first quarter, 24. So these are all actual numbers. There's no actual, there's no projections here on this, but you can see that CDs were pricing here in the next 12 months as we get into uh, fourth quarter, 20th or first quarter, 2024, you know, you could see that number is just going up, 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 up. You know, again, going up to over 13% here of, of, you know, banks total deposits are repricing. That's a, that is a big number. It's a big number. Uh, CDs repricing in the next six, three months are kind of flattening off just a little bit, but still, still higher. I mean, at, at over 5%. Um, you know, economists within our economic and country risk group did not expect the Fed to cut rates until late in 2024 and did not forecast larger cuts until the second half of 2025 with inflation moderating. Uh, the Fed could cut rates sooner and that would provide greater relief on funding pressures. Uh, but however, deposit costs should remain relatively sticky if rates decline modestly. Uh, more substantial rate cuts will be needed for funding costs to move notably lower, with banks continuing to prize deposits and facing regulatory pressure to do so. Uh, many bank depositors have also become more rate sensitive as rate heights have awakened Many customers accustomed to receiving low rates below 1% to 2% on their deposits in the aftermath of global financial crisis. This is, and this is a very, very important point. Psychologically, we have to think about the psychology of money here. You know, again, if, if you're under 30, the last couple of years have been fantastic because for the first time in your life, you've been able to walk into a bank or go and buy a T-bill or, or open a money market account with, with a fintech or something like that. And you've actually been able to get what's called a risk-free rate of return on your money. You've been able to get 5, 4%, 5%, maybe even 5.5% um, on your money for doing nothing, for doing nothing, just placing your money in this particular account. Um for people that haven't experienced that in a long time, retirees, savers, this has been a very welcome. Like while while interest rates have been high, uh, if you've been sitting there, you know, if you've got, you know, $100,000 in the bank and you're like, yeah, man, I just put it into a CD and I made five grand for doing nothing. I didn't have to put it in the market, didn't have to take any exorbitant risk and boom. I mean, that's that's a good that's a good thing. That's a nice thing. Um, if If banks try to, you know, ratchet that right back down, how are, what's the site, you know, how are people going to react to that? If they become accustomed to these rates, you know, I, I think they're going to want to continue to try to maximize and get those returns as best they can, especially in an inflationary environment where, you know, they're just getting killed on everything that they buy. So, you know, this is like the one bright spot out there right now. So, um, so again, we'll have to see what happens there. So, um, and this is a chart here that basically just says, you know, deposit costs will remain sticky even as the Fed pivots. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that. Uh, credit costs begin to slow, begin their slow grind higher. Uh, credit costs migrated higher off of a low base in the first quarter and should deteriorate further through the remainder of 2024 and into 2025 as stress from substantially higher rates begin to weigh on borrowers, particularly in the commercial real estate segment. Um yeah, so credit costs could be, you know, obviously the the higher interest rates, the expense to the borrower. Uh, it could also be loan loss reserves that banks have to set aside for for basically loans that they go bad. Um, and we have commercial real estate breakdown here. Let me see anything else. Banks face substantially higher credit costs. So again, yeah, net charge offs, provision for loan losses on this on this chart here that we're looking at uh, pre pandemic average provisions. So this is basically saying, yeah, I mean, just what I said, like, you know, you know, you're going to have higher charge offs, your loan loss reserves are going to go up um, in the short run, you know, over the next year or so. Um, and then it's got some interesting things at the bottom here as unemployment rate, GDP growth, Fed funds, and then 10 year treasury um, really predict now see here's something I absolutely do not agree with. It's saying that the 10 year treasury here is going to decrease. It's going to go from 4.29 to 3.68 to 3.31. Uh, now, the 10-year treasury, that's the longer end of the yield curve. Right now, we have a dramatically inverted yield curve where the higher end rate or the lower end rates are higher than your longer end rates, thus the inversion. 
I, with our national debt the way it is, sooner or later, the yield curve is going to revert back to normal territory. And when that does, that 10-year treasury, it's going to go up. It's not going to go down. Uh, I don't see that. I do not see this 3.68%. I don't see. I see this going the other way. I see the 10-year treasury going like this because it's going to get harder and harder for our government to sell their debt. It's going to get harder and harder to sell these T-bills. And that's going to put pressure on rates. It's going to put upward pressure on rates. If you want to entice right now, China and Japan, other countries, they're not buying our T-bills. So if you want to get them buying our T-bills again, that risk, that rate's going to have to go up and it's going to have to go up a, a good bit. Um, and then again, they have Fed funds rates here. Dry. Now, this, this is interesting here. So they're saying Fed fu funds at 5.32% and then going to 4.55. So basically dropping, you know, maybe about 75 basis points and then dropping all the way down to 2.89. And again, I don't see rates dropping that much. I mean, now you're, so you're saying, you're saying you're going to shave off about 250 basis points. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot. I, I, I don't see, I don't, again, I don't see that. I don't see that Fed funds rate coming down that high. Um, here's kind of interesting for GDP. So it's got GDP growth at 1.63%. We just had GDP come out this week and it was at 2.8, uh, which obviously, which, which I found, you know, astounding that we, that we went from like a 1.4 to 2.8, just like that. I just, I'm not, um, I I'm very suspect on that, on that number. Uh, but that, but like I said, we can get into that in another video. And then it has unemployment rate here at 3.89 going up to 4.13, 4.43, 4.959. Um, yeah, I guess that depends on if you believe the unemployment numbers, which I do not. So yeah. So anyway, uh, all right. So I thought this was a really good article, just really depicting on what's going on right now with how rates are the higher for long, what's called the higher for longer rate environment is really affecting uh, banks' income right now, basically, and how that is going to continue to affect income. And even if rates do start to come down, you know, banks are still going to have an issue because, you know, these CDs are going to mature. Uh, you've got about 18% of CDs maturing here in the next 18 months or next uh, 12 months. And that's going to put you know, again, and then they're going to mature at potentially higher rates. Uh, that's going to put again some. That's going to put more pressure on banks' margins right now. And with the with the lending not being so hot, uh, that's going to you know yeah that, that's going to that's going to hurt for a little bit. So I mean, twenty twenty five, rest of twenty twenty four, rest of twenty twenty five, probably not looking like they're going to be hot. Not the next eighteen months, probably not looking so hot for banks. But uh, hopefully, coming hopefully things will begin to turn. As the the Fed does decrease rates, I'm I'm thinking the Fed is going to decrease rates somewhere between probably 100 basis points to 150 basis points. I think that's probably the range that we're we're going to see. I really don't think they're going to cut to two percent, two and a half percent. I don't think they're you know 200, 250 basis points. I don't I don't think they're going to cut that low. But uh, but anyway. Uh, okay. If you like this episode, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe as that always helps the channel. Please make sure to leave your comments down below. Remember, we are on YouTube, Rumble, and all major podcast platforms. Please make sure to go out and check out some of the other episodes on the, uh, the other content that I put up there. Is there's a lot of great stuff that I have up there right now. And I will be back to see everybody again real soon. Thanks a lot.